Spoiler alert, the following podcast includes discussions on film that may potentially, intentionally or inadvertently, reveal plot twists, character traits, story details, up to and including endings, that might otherwise be considered spoilers. Proceed at your own risk. You are listening to Movie Sucktastic. like some bad movie. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, here's yet another episode we'll probably get fucking banned for. Coming uh, coming at you live. Not or, banned yet. We're not banned yet. We're not banned. Well, yeah. I was I was just joking with Scott that I uploaded the well, it's not a joke. But I, <laughs> I uploaded last week's episode to YouTube and was the, the episode was, was flagged faster than any episode I've ever uploaded before. Before it was almost done processing, it was flagged and it was blocked worldwide. And I told Scott, I said, we have another episode that's up, a cool world that's also uh, blocked worldwide. Which did end up in a, a strike against us, which I appealed, and we're in the process of that right now. And but, then, mis- but cool, but cool world's still available to watch. Cool world is still of av- uh, no, it's not. It's uh, I don't believe it is. Is it? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you, uh, yeah, you might be. Yeah, all, that, might, that's still available. You might only be able to watch it on YouTube though. Like on your phone, your video game console, through As your TV. To... When they block something, they can block everything but YouTube, like say through... I'm sorry, I, I, was, I wasn't specific enough. Uh, they can block everything but YouTube through a, a browser. Like say your computer browser. Okay. Uh, or if you are doing it from a tablet, you can't use the YouTube app. You can only use the browser. All it's right. It's not as good. But so, yeah, if, if uh, well, on the browser it's it's accessible. Correct. Yeah, it's got but, as many views as Krull does right now. But this which, one, Mr. Bean, isn't viewable anyway. It's blocked right. completely. As I'm saying, that this this one is not even in the um, appeal status. It's, it's so, still in the uh, we own this shit. I, so I was yeah, I was telling Scott that we might have to hold off on uploading anything but slideshow episodes, like older because, episodes. Because there's been a lot of um pirate sharing of Mr. Bean's holiday. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> it it's <laughs> this is bigger than like when they leaked Wolverine. Bigger. Yeah. It's bigger than the hackers right now threatening uh, companies like Disney uh and uh saying that hey, we're going uh, what's, what's the newest one with um it's pa- the uh the Pirates of the Pirates Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. Right? Yeah, they threatened them that they were going <laughs> to release it or if they don't Give, basically, they said if you don't give us money, we're going to release it on the internet before the movie comes out. No, but they said they're going to release pieces of it, like 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 body parts from a kidnapper. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. <laughs> um, they, they did that with Orange Is the New Black. Uh, yes, they someone, did. Yeah, and and they refused they refused to uh, to negotiate with the kidnappers, yeah, and never, so they released it. You never negotiate with terrorists. No, you never um, negotiate. Um, so so they, I think the first they, four episodes of Orange Is the New Black was uploaded. 
Yeah, something. I, I don't know how many, but I know that that they um, they ca- tried the, they called their bluff and then they weren't bluffing. They released it, so, and they're doing the same thing with uh, pirates. They're like, no, we're not, we're not giving that to you. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, although I haven't seen it around on the internet, so maybe they actually did get paid and well, they're keeping I, well, it hush the, hush. No, well, the first part they they said they're not going to pay, but so you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Got it. Well, I think it yeah. gets, I think it's re- releasing tomorrow. Well, they could they could. They could dump it tomorrow and fuck with their opening weekend. That's you know what shit. I didn't think of that. That's probably what they're gonna fucking do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so basically, I was telling Scott to go. You know, Mr. Bean's holiday. That's gonna be the end of our YouTube channel for real. <laughs> it's like, are you fucking kidding me? So one of two things will come out of this, and I told Scott, and I'll tell our listening audience this as well. I really enjoy the slideshow episodes that we do. I think they're they're they they're really well done. I think they keep your attention um, it, as much as say a film playing in the background, possibly even more so, because you get all these really cool visuals, you know, that you might or realistically miss in while it's playing in the background. Mm-hmm. So, if we end up with two strikes on our account. Which is very possible because that could happen with Cool World and now Mr. Bean's Holiday. We cannot risk uploading anything new uh, at all that would garner us a strike. So we would probably go sh- almost strictly to slideshow uh, video which, playing which, in the background. Which isn't a big deal, really. It really isn't. It's just a little it's, bit more work on our end, that's it, all. It, it's actually a lot more work because we have to download the screenshots... And then we have to basically create the like the two hour video from it um, to play in the background every single week, right? Whereas we're just playing the movie and you guys get to watch it with us. That's mm-hmm. the difference. So I mean, we already got a lot of shit on our plate, but obviously, fuck YouTube. We're we're not ending the show. We're we're going strong. We're actually yeah. doing better than we've ever done. It's uh, it's something I'm very excited about again. Not that I ever wasn't. It's just that now we're getting new subscribers like every day. Yes, every we are. single day we're getting new people subscribing. And the reason that's happening is because we're putting all this content out and people are gravitating towards it. That, that's how that works. Yes. You know, we might not get, you know, 25,000 or 50,000 subscribers or more. We're never really going to make money doing this. I mean, we may, but it's just something we like to do. Mm-hmm. So I would like to continue doing that, it's, and and this week we'd like to continue doing um, listener uh, requests. That's right, and we'll be doing that with Yodorovsky's Dune and the Death of Superman Lives, uh, both requested by email. This was not requested uh, from from the uh, from the website. Or I'm sorry, it wasn't requested from our uh, YouTube page, which was also forwarded to our Facebook page where we actually ask people to send us requests. This was actually from someone that has visited the site and said, hey, guys, would you consider reviewing this? And his name is Steve Brooks, and he's from the UK. So, uh, and what I like about his challenge uh, is that both documentaries are actually very similar. They're both unmade films. Both right. famous for being unmade. Which, I not that I didn't put the, the two together, but after watching, because I had already seen Yodorovsky's Dune, but then after watching The Death of Superman Lives, it had a ver- Death of Superman Lives had a very similar style to Yodorovsky's Dune, where it uses a lot of uh, pictures and drawings and um, some reenactment type stuff uh, that kind of told the story of what it could have been, things of that nature. So I really like this challenge. Um, I don't know if we'll do it justice per se because there's just so much content. There's only so much you can talk about. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I still like the challenge. So we're starting with Yodorovsky's Dune with Alejandro Yodorovsky. Uh, and the, the documentary kind of chronologicals his career leading up to Dune. Uh, like, you know, things like El Topo and the holy mountain which got him or fando yilis which is on the screen right now uh that really got him 
pushed in the direction of what do you want to do next? We'll give you anything. We love what you do. What are we doing? And he said, I want to do Dune. And it just kind of snowballed from there. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. He built this team, uh, H.R. Geiger, and um, what's his face? Um, the guy that did Alien. O'Brien? No, not O'Brien. He did Return of the Living Dead. What the hell's his name? Geiger? No, Geiger, but the, the other guy, too. Wasn't the other guy also involved with uh, Jodorowsky's Dune? The guy that that wrote uh, Return of the Living Dead? Oh, um... O'Brien? Was it O'Brien? I watched... I, I watched... I watched Superman Lives sooner, so I'm... A, I'm you're jogging my memory here. Yeah, I, I watched... Uh, I kind of... I had already seen Jodorowsky's Dune, but I kind of watched... Uh, uh, bits and pieces to kind of get my memory back. And I want to say that... See, now I need to know what his fucking name is because I'm, I I should know it just right off the fucking bat. But I'm, well, if you're, you're going to talk about him, yeah. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's O'Brien. You're, talk, uh, you're talking about Dan O'Bannon? Dan O'Bannon. Fuck me. Yeah. Yes, Dan O'Bannon. I'm saying O'Brien. I'm, I'm like, it's O something. He's Irish. I, <laughs> That's what I remember. Dan O'Bannon. Yes. He yeah. was also involved. Uh, Geiger was involved, or Geiger, however it's fucking pronounced. I've always said Geiger. I've always said Geiger, too. Um, you have all these people involved. Pink Floyd was going to do the soundtrack. Mick Jagger, <laughs> Mick Jagger was going to be it. Orson Welles was going to be it. David didn't Carradine. They a, didn't they have a different band for each like planet? Um, you know, I don't really remember if that was the case. I just yeah, it, he, he it was like he was it was like, it was like a different band was gonna do each planet's music. I thought like Queen was doing one, and then like I thought Sting was gonna do one. And that would probably make sense because Sting actually ended up in David Lynch's doing it in 1984. Mm. But um, yeah, it, it just very very interesting. Uh, just what this film could have been. Well, it's it's one of those things, too, but it, it never could have been. And that that's the big difference between this and Superman, uh, the death of Superman, uh, is that Jodorowsky's Dune never could have been. It is impossible. Yeah, it was it was it, an it was, artist. It was too big. It was an artist left to its his own devices, and that's there's nothing worse than an artist left to his own devices. It, the the budget would have been like 300 400 million it would have been a 4 or 5 hour movie it had nothing to do with the dune novels you think the dune fans were pissed off at, at uh fucking Lynch, um, Lynch's? At lynch you think they hated him for his changes <laughs> <laughs> no i think enough uh, and, i think enough of it would have been there that yeah the diehards would have been a, you know oh my god but Everyone else would have been okay. No, you know, no, they wouldn't have. You know why? Because Jodorowsky even said, "It's like, well, no, I'm not doing the book." Now you say Jodorowsky. Jodorowsky, whatever. Well, and and I always, I've always heard it, and they say it in the documentary. So, but it's yo, the J sounds like a Y. Jodorowsky. Yeah, I'm mispronouncing it. No, no, I, yeah. I, I'm just going to continue saying Jodorowsky. You can no, say you Jodorowsky say, if you, you want. You say I wasn't correcting you. You're saying it right. Go for it. I'm just saying. I was just finding yeah. it fascinating that we're both saying it differently. I'm not yeah, saying no, you're wrong. I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm admitting <laughs> it. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Um, but they they've actually they've they've actually talked about making Dune the way he wanted to now. Well, now now. And it would be what's interesting? Possible. Well, what's interesting about it is. Denis Villeneuve, I, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but the guy that directed Arrival, um, that and director, the new alien, right? The new Alien film he just did. Arrival, yeah. Um, oh, no, I, I thought I thought he directed the new Alien film. Alien Covenant. Yeah. Did he? I thought that was him. If it is, I, I, I've heard really good things about it. Or am I confusing? No, something no, else no, 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 no. Uh, I think so Alien like, Covenant was uh, Ridley Scott. No, no, it, no. Uh, oh, I'm thinking of Blade Runner. He's directing Blade He's Runner. He's directing the new Blade Runner. That's I, I knew it was one of those, uh, yeah. dear God, why are they making another one film? But I just got them mixed up between Blade Runner yeah, and Alien. Uh, Ridley Scott did do, do, do is doing, did, ugh, 
fuck, did do the new Alien Covenant, Ridley Scott. Right. But, right. And uh, Ridley Scott didn't do the new Blade Runner, which is why it might have a chance of being good. It's going to be good, because... Uh, I, I'm not going to go that far. D- Denis Villeneuve, or Villeneuve, he's a fucking talented director. And he the is. reason the reason why I'm bringing him up is because he's directing Dune. They're giving him Dune. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't... Not that he does... Uh, but Yodorovsky's Dune, but does elements of it. But Villeneuve, Villeneuve's Dune yeah. could just as well be the next Jodorowsky's Dune, because yeah. it's it's there's you know it's still in development. It's you know they're not filming or you know in pre-production yet. Yeah, he's so, very visionary, very visionary I, director. I and, love him as a director, but again, you know, it, it it takes a screenplay as well, and it certainly does. Yes, it certainly does. So I, I really I think Dune for the first time, even though I do like the David Lynch film, uh, for the first time, has a real shot at being a really great film. Again, I hold all res- I hold all reservations until I see Blade Runner. To be honest, because if Blade Runner, it's like ah, I don't well, know about this. Then whatever. I might have some issues with Dune. Well, I- Again, Ridley Scott's not directing it. That is correct. So that's a positive. I do like Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. And I know you, I know you don't. I, I I really don't. I you I know you don't, really don't. Don't drag me into the Ridley Scott discussion. I'm not going to do that. Oh yeah, the I, other film he did was Prisoners, with Hugh which Jackman. I still haven't seen. I haven't seen either, but it's like in the top twenty on it's IMDb. On oh yeah, it's on my list. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be incredible. Yeah, fuck, fuck Ridley Scott. He's a fucking whore. <laughs> yeah, he only has like 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 fifty films in development. Yeah, all right. He attaches a name to anything that sounds like it might be something. Yeah, I fucking hate him. He also did Sicario, which I also heard was fucking amazing. And which I also haven't seen. And I haven't seen that either. Did a film called Enemy. Which one is that? Enemy. That's that's um. We talked about that. That's oh, with, uh, is that the one Bubble where his, his Bubble Boy meets his doppelganger? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's, it's also, yeah, we talked about this when we saw Arrival. I have all of his films on my to watch list, and I haven't watched any of them <laughs> except for Arrival because we did it for the Oscars. Well, that, I said, yeah, beyond that, yeah. I haven't seen anything else he's done. <laughs> it's just that everything else he's done is supposed to be excellent. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, nothing but good things. Oh, oh man, Ridley Scott, Ridley, no, Ridley. What was the last good thing he directed? Um, what Go was on. what was the last good thing he directed? Exactly. It, no, he's done something. <laughs> good. Yeah. Uh, the last thing he directed that I liked, I'm I just che- I'm cheating and taking a quick look, is Matchstick Men, two thousand three. <laughs> I did like Matchstick Men. I I thought, but you know, as oh, far I, as you a- know what? I did like The Martian. I liked it a lot. I uh, ha- haven't seen it, but The Martian. Yes, you've seen The Martian. No, I haven't. Oh, The Martian. That no, that was shit. No, it wasn't. That was very oh, good. That was that was. Eh. Yeah, it was. It was good. <laughs> it was it good. Was definitely not. Oh, yeah, you know what? I did like American Gangster with Denzel Washington. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a great film, but I did like it. Oh, you know what? Uh, well, no, no, it's before. No, everything after Hannibal was like I could give a shit. I did. I loved Black Hawk Down, but you're not in the war films. Well, that's that's before Matchstick Men. It is before. Yeah, Hannibal. I, I liked Hannibal. His, his I, vert. I, his Hannibal yeah, was his rendition was excellent. A lot yeah. of a lot. You know what? You know why I liked it even more? Because a lot of people gave him shit about it. Because uh, he didn't stay strictly like exactly to the book. He did make some changes, and people had uh, issues with it. He, they they made they made him write the book so they could do another movie. Yeah. So yeah, why would the fuck would he give a shit about sticking to the book? Yeah, and you know they got shit for not having Jodie Foster in it. Uh, wow. You know they had uh, Julianne Moore instead. Who I mean, you couldn't get more opposite from Jodie Foster. Julianne Moore's a redhead. Jodie Foster's a blonde. I like Julianne Moore in it. Oh, I, I like Julianne Moore a lot. I think she's an excellent actress. So I had no issues with her in the part. It's just that only. People are so used to one person because the original Silence of the Lambs is um, asshole. It, 
it, well, in so many ways, it's an iconic film. So they only see yeah. one person as Clarice. Yeah, Manhunter was better. Um, my only problem. Well, I, well my only problem with Hannibal. Marginally. The movie. Marginally. No. My only problem with Hannibal the movie hmm. was I don't understand how, um, if you have, she's the FBI agent running this operation, they have on mic someone disobeying her orders, the mission is botched, and somehow all the blame goes on her. <laughs> it's like, we, I, you know, like, it's, it's, it's recorded. It's documented. Right. This, I, this, I told him, don't do this. He did it. How is this my fault? I, that, that's only. I remember, like, the, I was ready to give the film up right there. I was like, "This is bullshit." Really, really, really. This is how professional. Yeah, they don't cover their asses. Okay, come on. I, I, I was that annoyed me. But other than that, but anyway, yeah. Fuck Ridley Scott. Uh, Blade Runner. I actually just watched the Blade Runner trailer today. I was on a trailer kick today. Oh really? Yeah, I fell down this rabbit hole. I was like working on. Um, like my emails in the morning, and like I, uh, I checked. I was getting some TV shows because Fargo's out now, and uh, I, that's a show I need to start watching. Oh, it, oh like Fargo's out, and um, and the uh, Better Call Saul is out, and the new Archer's out, and so from there, I, I just like, just, like started watching movie trailers. Next thing I know, it's like four o'clock. So what the fuck happened? <laughs> I'm still in my pajamas. What happened? I yeah. But um... I watched the new Blade Runner trailer, and it's all right. I, I you know I'm, I don't I'm not a big fan of the original so I like so. I really like the original film um, mm. I can't say that I'm waiting with bated breath to see this film there's very few movies that I will do that with these days Blade Runner is not one of them I'm interested no. to see his take on it I think Ryan Gosling is an is a is an excellent actor I yeah. don't really care that Harrison Ford is in it but I understand that he probably has to be uh-huh. I don't know how big his role is. He'll probably end up dying in the movie. <laughs> to be Good. honest, um, if they're smart, they won't kill him. But if they do, I'm sure it'll work. It does put to rest, in my opinion, that he's not an android. But here, here, here's the thing. According to although he could still age, but he would have been. According, con- go ahead. I'm sorry. According to Ridley Scott. He definitely was, and that's why the director's cut has the whole unicorn thing to show that he is a simulant. So, the the sequel is going against that. Either that, or he was made special enough that he could age and live a normal life, whereas the which, others, the other which, ones, were meant to just expire. But that was something that was added at the end of the theatrical version in the o- in the voiceover to explain how him running away with the girl wasn't going to be like a like a, a two month tragedy. Right. So even that goes against the director's vision. So fans of Blade Runner, I would think would be already annoyed unless they explain it beautifully in the film which they could. They could. Um yeah. to be honest, just the way this director works, I wouldn't be surprised if if they're going if they make it work. I I I, I guarantee the I'm sure visually it's going to be stunning, and visually it will be layered and have a lot of um, and the thing text, is, you know, textual what is imagery. It, what isn't visually stunning these fucking days? No, no, no. Uh, how about um, that Camelot film that just came out? Oh, you mean the new King Arthur film? <laughs> yeah. The one that the one, one that, the one that cost like almost uh, two hundred million that made nothing. One that the one that nobody saw. Yeah, that one. Who the fuck? Keeps trying to franchise King Arthur. This is like the third fucking movie. You know, <laughs> I, and I liked the Clive Owen one. I thought that was a pretty decent film. I, but what the? F- <laughs> stop making King Arthur. I, it, you this know is what? like the third time they've tried to franchise, and I'm not even counting the one from 1981, the the the, the John Borman film. I'm not counting it. Yeah. You got the Clive Owen one, then I can't remember the other one, but then there's this one. It's like the third attempt, and they don't they don't make these fucking cheap. They're like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, I, I and it's like, but this is like Ghost in the Shell. It bombs. Everybody's like, well, why did it bomb? Because maybe because no one gives a shit about anime from the eighties. Exactly. And maybe no one gives a shit about fucking Arthurian legends when most of Americans can't even fucking read, let alone have a knowledge of history Although or an appreciation I, of I it. I think Ghost in the Shell was '90s, but it still it's it's it looks 
it doesn't look very different. Don't make me look that up. I, I don't even know how I, to look that up. I want to say Ghost in the Shell is early 90s, like anywhere from 91 to 93, 94. Well, if you're talking... All right, all right. Well, that's the um, the, the, the animated feature go movie, Ghost in the Shell. That was 95. But when did the... Uh, when did the... The, the uh, actual graphic manga, novel? Oh. Yeah, the ma yeah, when did that come out? I'm pretty sure... I No, you're probably right. That's probably late 80s, early 90s. Because it was around for a while. Thank God I have a computer in front of me. I can look this shit up. Look it up. Um, eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Okay. Eh, it's it, it's kind of, it's it's really more nineties than anything. Yeah. Sorry, I I stand corrected. Okay. Well, no. I mean, manga is eighties, film is nineties. But but well, eighty-nine. But they're, though, they're really close. They're so really close really together. Really a nineties thing. Yeah. But regardless, no one well, gives a shit. Well. I th I don't think the rule applies for for literature or any kind of written content like it does for film. I think well, I think for I'm film when you make film. a film like in yeah. 88 89 you're real you're essentially making a 90s movie same thing like you know every I agree with every you. decade I said yes. Oh okay. that's why I said yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I said yes. It's called, I'm calling it 90s. I stand corrected. Okay. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Are you doubling back like you're still trying well, to convince? Well, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Well, I, movies, it's like yes. The second time you've done that. But I, I'm, I, but I you're want. Not used, you're not used to me agreeing with you. That's the problem. It's like, no, Scott. This is it. I just said yes. <laughs> That's what I fucking just said. You're, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that you know, silly me. I, I don't know why. I don't know why they keep making alien films. Yet there's another one. Well, so. th with those, do make money. I guess. Well, but no. But what you said about um, anything's well, visually stunning, not true. Uh, just flashy, the... expensive, yeah. But that doesn't equate to beautiful or or meaningful. And I think that's I... why the Rival surprised me because I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting uh, uh, like contact with right. crossed with fucking ET. I don't know. Let alone it being nominated for best picture too and considered one of and deserving the, it. And considered one of the front runners, one of the one of the five, the chosen. Yeah. Um, you know, if there was only five, it realistically would have been still nominated. You know what I love uh, my, my favorite thing about The Arrival or Arrival, sorry, yes. is that is that um Yeah, don't get is, that uh, other sci-fi film mixed <laughs> like confused with it cuz that one was yeah. utter shit. <laughs> But um, I actually, I, I didn't hate the arrival. It uh, it was it was kind of shitty. It well, sci-fi is bad, but I mean, it, yeah. I, I've seen much worse. Anyway, but the, that the, director the went that, on to do Pitch Black, which it's like, wow, you did the arrival, and you actually this one really fucking rules. What was his budget on the arrival? I mean, look at who he had for a lead. Fifty million. He had Charlie Sheen. That 50 was. Million? I think the arrival. Uh, are the you, arrival? Are, are you talking about the arrival or arrival? The arrival, the arrival, fifty million. You think I, that much? I thought it was fifty million. Was it a direct to video? No, that was theatrical. Wasn't it? It felt it felt direct to video. It really felt. I'm gonna felt look, it. I'm gonna look it up. But, but uh, anyway, um, my favorite thing about Arrival is that there are like YouTube videos. Uh, what, how you know what was the ending? What did it mean? It's like come on. David Tui, he's the director. Yeah, Twoki. Twohi, Tuhi. I I I said I've always said Twohi. Oh, I'm sorry. Know. Twenty-five million. Opening yeah. weekend, one hundred and eighty-four thousand. <laughs> July release. I knew there's no way that was fifty million. Come on. Uh, it made fourteen million. Uh, here in North America, domestic. Alien, Aliens was forty million, at the time. 40, 40, 45, I think. Yeah, and I think I think it had. So I, no way did did uh. Did yeah. the arrival have fifty? I mean, it did make its money back. It made uh, just total. I'm looking at it. It looks like it made about sixty, seventy million worldwide. So, I mean, it, it tripled well, its know, budget. Again, video streaming. That's a. Well, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Anyhow, but so yeah. I mean, under that with that rationale, technically they probably could make Jodorowsky's Dune today, uh, but and they can make it with in budget. But they, it, was, it still would not be the scale that it was de it was meant to be designed to be. True. Uh, I mean, unless they unless they still went for a two hundred million dollar budget, you might you know. And I think they will. I think after Blade, after Arrival, and I just after, don't see it happening after Blade Runner. I think they're going to give Denis Villeneuve also, whatever, whatever he wants. Also, don't forget, 
half of the shit that was supposed to be in Jodorowsky's Dune ended up in other stuff. Oh, yeah. It was fingerprint. One of the lines in the documentary, which I think is excellent, there's fingerprints from Jodorowsky's Dune throughout that era of cinema. Yeah, yeah. Everything from yeah. Star Wars to Alien to mm -hmm. um, uh, just anything that was being released at that time period, if it was sci fi, you know, or that kind of genre. Yeah. It was just fingerprints were everywhere. The only thing that fingerprints weren't on was David Lynch's Dune. That's what he... <laughs> no influence whatsoever. Fucking De Laurentiis. I mean, come <laughs> on. Are you kidding? I mean, I, and, and you know what? But even though I, 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 you know, I say that Jodorowsky was, you know, unleashed and it was impossible, this weird artist pipe dream, I have nothing negative to say about, even though, you know, and I, it is negative. I'm saying, you know, it had nothing to do with the movie. It was going to be completely weird. He had different bands for each planet. It was, you know, it's inspired. And you've got to appreciate somebody willing to reach that high. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that so many people were on board were like, yeah, let's do this. And like even like studios and stuff were, yeah, let's do this. I mean, you had you had money going into this and it never happened. A lot of money going into it. Yeah. And it, it just uh even when it even even when it must have been obvious to people that there's no way this is gonna be fucking done. Uh yeah, I think there's it, it's still it was, an amazing was, thing to look at. It was nixed. Oh, this do is this a, this is a beautiful documentary. Oh, it, oh, because well, because all the um, uh, I, now that's another uh, difference between this and Death of Superman is that yeah, this is a beautiful documentary. All the uh, art, the concept art, is uh, didn't they even use the concept art for um, that that uh, director's cut opening of Dune, or is that other art that was no, used? No, that you mean the prologue. The prologue. I don't believe that is. I don't believe that is from. Uh, okay, that's Yodorowsky. somebody else. All right, yeah. it's been a while since I saw that. I, you know, it was it was yeah, Dune. That so. was like matte and oil type stuff, color okay, pencil. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was yeah. that was original stuff. Um, even that oh, was yeah, beautifully. Mobius was that, involved. Yeah, yeah, Mobius was involved. That was beautifully done. Uh, the the prologue was was really well done for Lynch's, um, which you know he didn't want any of that stuff, and I thought it fit really well. You know, it, it had that that book feeling to it. But yeah, oh, yeah Mo definitely. Mobius was involved. I mean, all these different guys. It's crazy. And it just it never happened. It never got off the ground. It, it just, it, it could have been something spectacular. And one of the things that they mentioned is that this film, if was able to be made, would have come out before Star Wars. And had it been made, had it been made, it could have changed the way everything was done. Including Star Wars, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's one of those one of those projects that it inspired other films to do the things that they were doing. It, it did that much in the same way that two thousand and one, a space odyssey, inspired a film. Mm -hmm. You know, the cinematic yeah. uh, universe. Uh, so this would have done the same thing, and as visual a director as uh, Yodorovsky was, it just. It really could have been something. Maybe not everything that he, you know, aspired it to be, but I think he would have got most of what he wanted. Mm -hmm. I, I really do, and I really think it would have been. I, I think it would have been visionary. I really yeah, do. And, and don't forget, Mobius also worked on Alien. Did he really? As well, I, I, yeah, as well as Geiger. Yeah, he was the concept artist for that too, and he went on to do. Um, the, the the get work with uh he did work with Tron uh and uh <laughs> Masters of the Universe oh, God. and Willow and it all kind of goes downhill from there. Yeah, Lucas stole. And then and then he bottomed out with the fifth element. <laughs> uh Lucas, you know, stole some of uh Yodorovsky's guys and Lucas stole something? Yeah. <laughs> that fucking hack. Yeah. You know, it hurts me to say. And what's how much his I've... face? The guy that was doing 2001. Uh, I'll, I'll get his name in a second. But Yodorovsky wanted him in a big, big way to do all of the the space stuff for him as well. Oh, you mean the special effects? The special effects, all of this, the 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 space. What was his name? It's not actually listed in the credits here, but 
Well, it would be under like uh, art direction. Uh, Not sure who you're talking about for 2001. I don't see his name here, so it's not coming okay. out at me. All right, but it's not his name is not listed in 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 the full cast for Yodorovsky's Dune. All right, and yeah, I, I'm forgetting who he mentioned there, but you know, it's all over the place. I mean, it, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's uh, I, I can't tell you how much it pains me with Lucas to actually say that I've enjoyed the last two Star Wars films. <laughs> fucking irritates the shit out of me. I'm so used to being able to shit talk them. I haven't seen all of Rogue One yet, but what I saw I really liked. Uh, you know, it was good. I yeah. mean, I, did I was did I love it? You know, no, I don't love any of them. <laughs> but uh I enjoyed it. It was it was yeah. uh a little predictable, but it's going to be because you know how it ends. Well, yeah, it's that time yeah. period between episode 3 and 4. So. I think I think the only thing I hate 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 in it is the um is the CGI uh uh Peter Cushing. Oh, yeah, it's creepy. They actually have a rip tracks for it already. I have to get that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Here, here's the thing, though. It's kind of necessary that he's in it. It is, but I just don't like how it looks. So I have a feeling that they're going to, uh, they're probably going to CGI uh, Obi Wan as well. Uh, what's, well what's his face? Um, uh, well, no, because we're we're back to. No, it's the future and. Fucking Luke, can, Luke! Luke can see him. He's a fucking ghost. Luke, uh, I, I don't know. I, you know what? I whatever. Dude, you could see Yoda. You could see Obi Wan. You probably if, if Han Solo truly is. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Rah, 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 spoiler! Alert, if if Obi, uh, Han Solo is truly dead, he's so uh -huh. close to the Force. Even though he's not a Jedi, they'll probably fucking ghost him up too. As long as Lucas doesn't have his fingerprints all over it, I'm sure we're good. You know. Is it the same director for episode eight? Last Jedi for Last, Last no, Jedi? No, no, it's somebody new, somebody that's new to this genre. But previously, the films that he's made were actually really good, so they're taking a chance with him. Um, see, now I gotta look up who the fuck did the special effects for two thousand and one. Oh, you man. you find out who's doing uh, Last Jedi. Uh, I know. I know he's doing last shot. I re, uh, Rian Johnson. And what is uh, what did he do before? Uh, he he directed a couple episodes of Breaking Bad. He did Looper. And Brick, which I like Brick. Right. He wrote Brick and Looper. Uh, Looper. Uh, I, d I dug Looper. I dug tried it. To be it tried to be too clever and failed. Yeah. That that's the problem with it. Uh, but I can see why they're taking a chance with him because he's got talent. Yeah, I, I didn't hate Looper. I just uh, it wasn't good. I know it wasn't. Uh, you weren't totally on board. It, well, it's it's time travel, and I, I'm a sucker for time travel, so I will I will forgive. But um, it doesn't. It tries to make sense too much, and the more it tries to make sense, the less it makes sense. Right. Like just the, just the very concept of what a Looper is doesn't make sense. <laughs> just just does no reason for this at all. So, but beyond that. Okay, special effects. What's his name? I don't know. But, but yeah, I mean, that's my... my, my uh, Jodorowsky's doing is a great documentary. Uh, you can't... You gotta watch it, though, because half of it's subtitled. So you can't just put it on in the background. You gotta pay attention. Well, I have it on now, and it, it's mostly subtitled. Especially, yeah. Specifically when Jodorowsky talks, because even when he's speaking English, it's broken. Yeah, so it's, you really do need you really do need it. Mm -hmm. I can't find can't find him. But don't worry about it. Don't oh, worry about it. Oh, I hate that. As as a listener to stuff like yeah. that when that happens, well, then you shouldn't have kept harping it, on it. it. It drives me crazy when I'm in the car. Yep. <laughs> but uh, speaking of older episodes, Holly was listening to um, our Cool World episode. Oh yeah. She was very annoyed. She goes like, "You know, you guys, you talk about the film, and then you go on this this ty this like half hour tirade against some guy called like uh, Backy." And, and <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." He says, "No one knows who that is." Don't you know? Like, That's the guy who made the film. He's like, "No, no one knows who it is. No one wants to hear it. It's like you know, you're just going on a tangent. I'm waiting for you to talk about the movie." It's like the only reason anybody knows Cool World is because Backy did it. Says, "I don't know, back, back, Backy, whatever." So you just, you, you, know, def you defended us. 
I did on that good, one. Like, good. And he's like, no, we do tangents, but that was a tangent that was totally about the movie. That's right. <laughs> it's a Bakshi film. It's like, you, you talk about this ba- ba- bakey guy. Bakey. No. <laughs> I forget what she said, but it wasn't Bakshi. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? Oh, you mean Bakshi? Of course we're talking about Bakshi. <laughs> what else are we talking about? <laughs> Like, now you talk about Lucas? Well, just oh, get back to talking about Star Wars. No, it's... <laughs> I had to bring that up. I thought it was funny. That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, but Jodorowsky's Dune is... Um, it's... It's the doc... It's out of the two of them. It's the one I wish had been made more. And the one where I can totally understand... I Like, like the only bad guys... There's no bad guys in Jodorowsky's Dune. Because it's just like, oh, we tried to do this thing that was too big and it never happened because it was too big. That's it. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, Death of Superman, a little different. Are we go? Are we moving over to that now? Uh, unless you have anything else to add on. No, I, re- I, I really don't. Um, it's a very beautiful the art. I mean, the artwork and when the thing is when Jord- when he's Jordorowski's talking about it, he has this big book of his of all the concept stuff. And I was like, dude, just publish and sell that. Yeah. Right. That thing will be a hundred bucks a pop. I guarantee he'll sell a million of them. Probably. Yeah, 120. 120. That's a, that's a big book. What a nice paper for that. Yeah. None of that, uh, none of that thin shit. No. But, uh, so, so I mean, Jodorowsky's Dune was, like, an artist, like, getting behind a filmmaker, but a filmmaker artist, getting behind this vision and trying to make it. 